Good morning, God's beloved. Welcome to worship with University Christian Church. I'm so glad to see all of you who are here in person and everyone who is joining us online. Welcome to you as well. If everyone would take a moment to either scan the QR code in your bulletin, the link that's in the description of this video, um, or you can fill out the card that was out on the table. We'd love to have record of your attendance with us today. It is Holy Week, y'all. Happy Palm Sunday. We've got a lot going on in the life of the church. So a few uh, reminders about everything that we have coming up. You know that we are collecting donations for Micah 6 in lieu of Easter lilies. There have been lots of supply chain problems all over the country. Many, many, many churches are not having Easter lilies. So we are directing our um, donations in honor and in memory of our loved ones toward Micah 6. And those will be listed in next week's bulletin in an insert. If you'd like to make sure that your donation is recognized in that bulletin, please have those donations, those donation cards at least, submitted by the end of today. You could also just email the office if you'd like to make that happen. Also, immediately following church today, I'll give you an exact time right before I give the benediction. We are going to have a training session for anyone who's interested in being a server, a communion and offering um, server. Formerly, those were called deacons. We have a different church structure now, and so they will be servers. If you have done that before, and if you haven't, please stay for just maybe 10 or 15 minutes, we're gonna go through our new um, practice because starting Monday Thursday, we will go away, at least for now, from using those little communion kits. Um, so it's gonna be a little bit different than it was pre-pandemic, so we've got some new things to go over and we'd love to um, get everyone on the same page about that. Monday, Thursday, we've got a service at seven o'clock here in the sanctuary um, on that day. There will be some prayer stations available in the sanctuary and in the narthex and in the chapel before that service and after that service all through um, Good Friday until 2.30 in the afternoon. So you might wanna come a little bit early to experience those prayer stations if you would like to see. Good Friday, we've got a service at noon, and that one is on Zoom only. So if you'd like to join it, the link is in um, all of our emails. You've also, um, you'll get more emails this week about it, so stay tuned and reach out if you need that link. Easter day is gonna be a big day as well. We've got an Easter potluck breakfast at 9.30. Whether or not you bring something, we want you here. So. Uh, please RSVP if you can, and you can also let us know if you're going to bring a dish. We've got a sign-up genius for that. <clears throat> After the breakfast, we're going to have Easter eggs. So all kids, we have a very good time with that. Uh, light up there. <laughs> and then we're going to have a beautiful, wonderful day of uh, Easter worship, uh, including a baby dedication. So. We're excited about that little um, Amalia Jade Martinez will be that day. Sorry about the mic issues, everyone. Um, and then also you'll want to remember to bring your fresh, freshly cut flowers for the flowering cross that will be out in the um, courtyard. Um, we'll all add those flowers before the service. It's gonna be very beautiful. And then you might want to take pictures there before or after the service. It is Holy Week. We are glad to be here. God has gathered us together, here in person, online, to worship. May God keep us mindful of this profound nature of Holy Week. As we listen to the prelude, let us become aware of God's presence and let us prepare ourselves for worship. Thank mm -hmm. you.
get your palms ready. Hopefully you have them. Hear this call to worship. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for God is good. God's steadfast love endures forever. Not even the stones can remain quiet. We all must shout out the goodness of God. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Together, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest.
Please join me in the litany of praise. Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, rejoice for God is in our midst. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest heaven. Hosanna, rejoice for God is in our midst. Please be seated. During our prayer today, there will be some pauses of silence for us to lift up our prayers to God. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Holy God, you created the heavens and the earth, sea and dry ground, creeping things and flying birds, mountains and plains, desert sands and forest canopies. All around us, the beauty of your handiwork is evident. We praise you for such wonder. Throughout time, you have remained faithful. You've opened pathways through the sea, provided manna in the desert, sent prophets to call us back home. You sent Jesus to show us the way. He preached and healed, taught and challenged us, loved and encouraged us. Yet our songs of praise became shouts of death. Palm branches lifted high in honor were left in the dust. When we turned away from him at the cross, he offered forgiveness. Thank you for such wondrous love. We pray for your world, O oh God for nations that worship power and might. May they be ruled instead by humility and peace. We pray for all followers of Christ, that we may all have the mind of Christ. We pray for the victims of human tragedies and disasters of nature. We pray particularly for all who are suffering the horrors of war in Ukraine. We pray for those who are in prison, the repentant and the unrepentant, and those falsely accused. We pray for those who are ill or injured or rejected. Holy One, strengthen us in these days, during this holy week before us, that we might recognize this one who comes humbly, and that we might follow him. God of compassion, through Jesus Christ, you've come to us and shared in our humanity. Mold us into people who show your mercy, into people who choose your kingdom over earthly empires, and keep us obedient to him, whose name is above all other names, Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray and who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And if the children will come forward, we're gonna have a minute. What? How are you today, friends? I'm 
happy to see all of you. Today is a really special day in the life of the church, and we call it Palm Sunday. Palm Sunday. Do you know why we call it Palm Sunday? Yeah, we did Palm Jesus to the Earth, but think about it just another minute. Harris, what was your idea? All right, so Harris is going to preach this week because he told us that Jesus rode on a donkey and everyone was waving palms. So congratulations, Reverend Harris. You're now ordained. Good job. So there is a story that we're going to hear about Jesus on a donkey and everyone is waving their palms. And he's riding along, and people are saying, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Well, there were some folks who didn't like that. They didn't like everyone was being really loud, and they were really celebrating and having kind of a parade. And they said, hey, Jesus, tell your disciples to be quiet. And Jesus said, if they are quiet, then even the rocks are going to cry out. Rocks, just like this. Do you think rocks can cry out? No. Why don't you think it can cry out? Because. Because why? Because they're heavy. They're heavy? Do they have a mouth? No. They don't have mouths? No, they don't have even eyes. No, they don't even have eyes. You're absolutely right. And they don't even have a whole form of a body. You're right. They don't even have a body. Or a head. Or a head. Absolutely. They're just a big head without any places. Yep, they're just a big rock without any places. Yeah, and they're bones. They can be bones. Yes, absolutely. So, yes, you guys are all so smart and observant. Thank you all so much for sharing this with me. Yeah. Oh my goodness, kindergarten is not what it was in 1989. Let me tell you. Okay. Not in 1899. <laughs> She just asked me what kindergarten was like in 1899, and I can't answer that, but thank you for your question. I'll do some research. Okay, so back on to the rocks. So we get to cry out and rejoice because we know the good news that Jesus is Lord. Would you like to hold one? No, Harris, Harris, Harris. <laughs> So we know this good news, and so the rocks don't have to cry out because we can cry out, and we can say, glory to God. <laughs> say it. Glory to God. Glory to God. <laughs> everyone. <laughs> don't make the rocks cry out. Great job, everyone. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> I think we're good time for us to pray. Will everyone repeat after me? Dear God, thank you for Jesus. Help us. Always say the good news in our hearts and with our mouths. Amen. Awesome, guys. I'm going to take these because I'm afraid if you take them, they might not end up where they need to go. All right. Bye, friends.
Today's scripture comes from the Gospel of Luke, the 19th chapter, verses 28 through 40. After he said this, he went on ahead, going up to Jerusalem. When they had come near Beth, oh, I practice this word. <laughs> when they had come up near Bethphage and Bethany, at the place called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples, saying, "Go into the village ahead of you, and as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has been has never been ridden." Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you untying it? Just say this, the Lord needs it. So those who were sent departed and found it as he had told them. As they were untying the colt, its owners asked them, why are you untying the colt? They said, the Lord needs it. Then they brought it to Jesus. After throwing their cloaks on the colt, they set Jesus on it. As he rode along, people kept spreading their cloaks on the road. As he was now approaching the path down from the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of disciples began praise, to praise God joyfully with a loud voice for all the deeds of powers they had seen, saying, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest heaven. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to him, Teacher, Order your disciples to stop. He answered, I tell you, if these were silent, the stones would shout out. So ends the reading. What a pleasure and an honor it is to be able to preach this last Sunday in Lent, to wrap up the sermon series Wilderness Renewal that we have been on for the last five weeks. We've been discussing different spiritual disciplines and hopefully practicing some of them, but we have generally been able to be together in this space of reflection and renewal and next week we get to celebrate the resurrection. But we're not there yet. The spiritual discipline that we are going to be covering today is one of perhaps the easiest and most joyful, at least for me. It's worship. And great job, everyone. You, you've already done it. Good job. If you are participating online or in person today, you are actively participating in the spiritual discipline. I love this Sunday, and I love it for a lot of reasons. It holds a lot of theological meat. Liturgically, it kicks off the one worship service that is going to last an entire week long. This is technically Palm and Passion Sunday, because sadly we won't all be able to be gathered for the two services that will happen between now and next week. But I do, I implore you, if you can at all make it at work this week, please come. They're beautiful services that Pastor Megan has arranged, and it matters at least to come to the Zoom Good Friday service. There is so much that happens between the parade and the resurrection, and it is unfaithful not to attend to that. But today, I'm staying in the palms. I'm staying in the worship, in the parade. Throughout the ministry of Jesus, we heard him remind the disciples and the other witnesses to stay quiet. But now, in this passage, the time is right. Jesus is ready to spread the word that he is the word. And the disciples, they're about to burst with this good news. And it's not just the 12 of which we are all familiar, but indeed the scripture calls it a whole multitude. They throw down their cloaks on the road and they praise God joyfully with a loud voice for the deeds of power that they had seen. The people of God have reached a saturation point. 
where they can no longer be quiet. But when some of the Pharisees in the crowd call out to Jesus, say, hey, hey, get them to shut up. This is too much. Jesus tells them that if the crowd is to be silenced, then the stones will cry out. So full of this good news is all of creation. We have to acknowledge that Jerusalem is the center of the action. It's where the power of the Jewish people was concentrated. But this was a dangerous time. Don't forget, our Jewish population who we're talking about were also marginalized people in the Roman Empire. They were allowed to celebrate their religious feast, but Rome was sure to have plenty of guards on hand, just in case things get out of control. And the reluctance of some of the Pharisees was probably not to keep folks from praising God, but instead it was to keep their profile low to avoid detection as an other, as an oppressed people. And we know this story and we've participated in this story and the waving of the palm fronds and the refrain of Hosanna, or if you're like Susan Cassano and me singing Jesus Christ Superstar in the narthex before worship, I'll let you sing it, I'll spare you my voice. But we don't have either of those things in Luke. And you don't have to just take my word for it. You can reread it when you get home. Cody did a beautiful job earlier, but there's no Hosanna. There are no palm fronds. We are missing two key pieces that we have all come to rely upon with Palm Sunday. But I think maybe that's the key. Something that we can chew on today as we reflect on worship as a spiritual discipline. We take these last few days of Lent, we have until Thursday, to spend some time reflecting on the past two years and on the next two years. Friends, this is the first Holy Week that we have celebrated together in person since 2019. We've actually rounded the entire Revised Common Lectionary, which is a selection of scriptures that makes a three-year cycle And we're back on the same texts that we used three years ago. And so much has happened. In the church and in the world and in this congregation and with each of us, I would say. But I can say with some confidence, with all confidence, with every ounce of confidence that I can hold within my soul, that God is still unchanged. Three years ago, 2,000 years ago, in the Gospels, Jesus makes the same triumphal entry into Jerusalem, even without the palms, even without the hosannas. In the past two Palm Sundays, worship has looked very different than we have ever seen it, and doesn't it feel good today, right, to have our choir back, to have our procession back? And we're still finding ourselves. We're still readjusting and finding our way back to ourselves, which is not going to be the same as it was three years ago. And praise God, right? There have been lots of conversations happening the past few weeks about how we did things pre-pandemic and how we might want to shift some things and what is familiar. But what is necessary? But friends, based on this scripture reading, Even palms aren't necessary on Palm Sunday. Sometimes we can so easily distract ourselves from worship with our concern for the things that are secondary. Worship is an experience where, theologically speaking, all of us are the actors, and the only audience is God. The ways that we sing and we play music and we preach and we pray, all of those are very important. But those things are no more important than the postures of reverence that each person experiencing this service has. 
of those people who might hear some stray organ chords in our courtyard, they are also participating in worship. And trust me, I love a solid and theologically sound and beautiful worship service as much as anyone. And I'm so happy today, I can't even explain. But those criteria narrow what we can call sacred. And we don't celebrate a God of scarcity. We don't profess the ways that God is limited by human devices. So this week we will have lots of beautiful worship services for you to attend, and I want you to attend, please. But I also wonder how we can live into worship in the times we aren't gathered here. On Monday, Thursday, we will hear the last thing that Jesus required of us in his human life, that we love one another. On Good Friday, we will witness and reflect on the very worst of human systems of oppression. And on Sunday, we will celebrate the cornerstone of our faith story, that death does not win. But even if we cannot come to church, what might shift within us on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday that we remember that the only requirement for worship requires the audience of God, which we all have all the time? Try having a tiny worship experience yourself upon waking, or maybe right before you go to bed, or while you're driving, a good spiritual discipline is to pray for people on Mopac or on 35. Recite your favorite verse, sing your favorite song. Spend just a few moments directing the love of your heart towards God and God's creation. Friends, this week starts with a parade and ends with a resurrection. There is so much that happens in between, and I hope that you're able to experience it all with your church family. But above all of that, I hope that you're able to find some time to worship God on your own. The same God who is constant through a parade, betrayal, torture, capital murder, and resurrection. The same God who is constant through a pandemic and leadership changes and war and peace. And that same God who is constant in all of our lives forevermore. Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord, peace in heaven and glory in the highest heaven. These words from today's reading were shouted out of joy, hope, and desperation in a world not too much unlike ours today, where oppression ran rampant and the basic needs of humans were unmet. Jesus offered a new way. His life and ministry demonstrated what it meant to care for and love all people, sending a message so counter to the one demonstrated by those in power. Jesus risked it all, including death, to share the good news with the poor and the lowly, unapologetic in his ways of love and justice. As we gather today to remember the triumphal entry of Jesus into Jerusalem, may we remember that we too are called to be bold in our actions and unapologetic in our ways of love and justice. Let us hear the desperate cries of those in our world and with our offerings respond to their needs, just as Jesus taught us. You may find ways to give of your time, talent, and treasures in your bulletin or by visiting UCC's website. For those of you worshiping in person, an offering plate may also be found in the narthex.
and loving God, we come to your table joyously. Lord, we experience the joy of this season. We experience the joy of the coming of Christ. We experience the joy of knowing that things will never be the same. Lord, we come in gratitude for all that you have done, especially for the gift of your son. Lord, help us to carry this joyfulness and gratitude with us. Lord, take these offerings, bless them to your use, and help us to use them to spread that joy of the good news throughout the world. For this we pray in your son's holy name. Amen.
This is the climax of our worship service. This is why we are all gathered together. This is an open table, which means that no matter who you are or what you believe or what you don't believe or what you've experienced or how the world has harmed you or how the world has cared for you, this table is for you. This feast has been prepared for you. Friends, we are gathered today on this, which is kicking off our Holy Week. And we have to remember that through parades, through arrest, through torture, through all things, God is constant. The Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it. And he said... This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, also the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. According to his commandment, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. Saving God, what we could not do for ourselves, you have done for us by sending Jesus to free us from sin. Redeemed, we are free from its hold, able to walk according to the Spirit in the ways of life and peace. On this Sunday morning, as we remember Christ's triumphal entry into Jerusalem to begin his journey to the cross, remind us that he walked this path for us. As we share the cup of the new covenant made possible in his blood, Fill us this morning with sorrow for our past sins and joy for Christ's willingness and obedience that led him to Calvary. Amen. so grateful for each and every person who has been gathered to worship this morning, whether it is online or in person. Siblings, we want you to know that if you are in search of a place to call home, we would be honored to be that place for you. Please come forward during our last hymn to join the church, or you may reach out to Megan or me with any questions you may have this week. But now, let us all rise and sing together one last time.
bit more information about our communion change that will start uh, Monday, Thursday, and then continue on um, if COVID numbers are, are staying good. Um, we have thought through the safest way to do it still. We are not yet beyond the pandemic, so um, that's part of what we're going to talk about at the training after for anyone who wants to learn more about serving. Um, it will be a new sort of, of way of doing it because we're trying to be COVID safe. And for anyone who feels uncomfortable with the past elements, even with those precautions in place, we will have the kits still available to anyone who feels more comfortable with those. It's a big week. Please um, reach out if you have any questions about any of the events that are going on. Watch your email, Facebook, Instagram. We've got lots of announcements and we'll try to keep everyone in the loop. Now receive this benediction. God's beloved, may God grant you strength through the Spirit. May Christ dwell in your hearts through faith. And may you know, share, and rejoice in the immeasurable love of God this holy week and always. Amen. <laughs>